Hello again, I'm Rocky Reynolds, and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Silverstone Strider Plus ST1000P 1000 Watt Power Supply. What's included with this power supply is a user's manual, a specifications guide, there are four Velcro tie downs, four cable ties, four black screws for mounting the power supply in the case, and there are also four thumb screws for mounting the power supply in the case. So you can choose whether to use the regular black screws or the thumb screws. Also included is a power cord. The Strider Plus series of power supplies are currently available in three different wattages, 750, 850, and 1000. I will be reviewing the 1000 watt model. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well-regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use and there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 180 watts and the 12 volt rail is 960 watts which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Now also, some people might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt and the plus 5 volt rails are 30 amps each. And there is a single plus 12 volt rail which is 80 amps. There are a number of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply varies from 85% to 88% depending on load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, overvoltage, undervoltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has a PFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, 80 plus, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. This power supply meets the 80 plus silver certification. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable product than a power supply with low-grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. And finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. Now let's have a closer look at this power supply. It has a black paint finish and the housing is steel. They include an ultra quiet 135mm fan and the hotter the inside of the power supply gets, the faster the fan spins. Now this fan and the honeycomb ventilation ensures maximum cooling so the power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. Here's the power cable connection but note that there is no power switch. This power supply has plenty of leads and they are all modular. A completely modular design like this is very uncommon. Most power supplies that boast a modular design have some leads hardwired into the power supply. Modular leads are fantastic because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup which reduces the cable mess inside the case and increases airflow. Finally, have a listen to the 135mm fan.
So why get a 100% modular power supply? Why not go with a semi-modular power supply? Well, there are lots of reasons. One of them being the fact that you will not have extra bulk cables that you're not using inside of your case, which not only look bad, but of course will hinder airflow. So if you want a really clean looking interior, get a 100% modular power supply, because otherwise you will probably have cables that you are not going to use. Now there are plenty of semi-modular power supplies on the market, but in some cases you will have an extra motherboard lead left over or possibly maybe one or two video card leads left over and again that's bulk inside your case. This power supply is 100% modular. It's black so it looks great. Has a very quiet fan and also is really efficient. Overall this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.